Do you want to know about a day in the life of an entry-level cybersecurity analyst? Well, in this video, I'm going to walk through how I got my entry-level job, the skills and certifications that I had, and what a day-to-day -day life is like. If you're new to the channel, my name is John Good, and here we talk all about cybersecurity. If you enjoy the content, make sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions, let me know down in the comment section below. So there's a lot of people that watch this channel that are either trying to get their first job ever in cybersecurity, or they're just trying to get their first cybersecurity role. And so I thought it'd be a good idea to kind of give you some insight about what it was like for my first job. Now keep in mind that my experiences might not exactly match yours or they might not match yours at all, but it'll kind of give you some ideas and insight about how I went about things when I was looking for my entry level job and when I started it. So my first job was with Raytheon and that's a defense contractor here in the United States. And my pay was around $60,000 a year. And to start out, my qualifications included Network Plus, Security Plus, I had a CCNA, and I had an undergrad in business administration, and about two thirds of the way done with a master's program in information assurance, which is basically cybersecurity. I didn't have previous IT or technology job experience. I had worked in telecommunications, so doing sales and that, so kind of technology based, but not really an IT kind of job. I did have an internship that I did in my master's program, which was for Northrop Grumman, which is another defense contractor, so the same industry. But if you know what I believe about internships, you don't get to do a ton of real actual work experience with those. It's really kind of getting to know the industry and the jobs. So the thing with entry level jobs is you really do the general kind of tasks that you would associate with a job, right? So creating diagrams, creating documentation, reviewing audit logs, looking at network and system activity. Kind of these baseline activities are really what you're going to really focus on for these entry level jobs. With entry level jobs, you're especially not really gonna get tasked with leadership kind of things, especially right off the bat. You're gonna to have to learn the approval workflows and the processes and procedures and kind of how things work. Of course, it depends on what level you come in at because if you come in as a manager, obviously you're gonna be expected to run things right away. But again, as an entry level employee, you're gonna really have to focus on getting used to how things work in that environment. As a new employee, of course, you need to master things like creating diagrams and documentation. And so when I was a new employee, I really focused on these things at the entry level. And I realized that you wanna volunteer as much as possible too, because you can get new opportunities and experience different things the more you volunteer, but also you wanna look for things that you can help improve on. So if you see a process or maybe a procedure that you can help on, Maybe you can create a document or some documentation around something. Anything that you can do to help, it just makes you look that much better and it makes your performance review even better. So in my role, I realized that as I started volunteering, I started getting on some of these special project teams. So doing things like evaluating tools. So maybe you're getting a new vulnerability scanner. And so that was one project that I got to be on and evaluate some different products and talk to the vendors and kind of get outside of that normal role, those general tasks that you're gonna really have to focus on at the entry level. And you're really starting to expand and grow in that role. Another thing that I noticed is that smaller teams tend to give more opportunities than larger teams because there's still a bunch of work that has to get done. There's just less people to do it. And the longer that you're around, I noticed personally that I started getting brought into more meetings and kind of elevating my responsibilities. And frankly, when you're at like two to three years within an organization, you're kind of starting to rank up to that next level because you've been around. And especially if you're in an organization where there's a lot of turnover, you can excel and be kind of considered that higher level much, much quicker. So something else that I noticed was with education and credentials like certifications. So especially at that entry level, you're gonna notice that a lot of people don't have a lot of certifications or maybe not a lot of degrees and things like that, but it really becomes apparent as you start getting this stuff and you really start to set yourself apart. For example, by the time that I left my first entry level job, I had already finished my master's degree. I had a bachelor's degree. I had passed the CISSP exam. I had the CEH. I had two CCNAs, uh, routing and switching and a security, network plus security plus. And I'm not saying this to brag or anything like that, but it's just very visible the more credentials that you get at these entry level jobs because it really does matter a lot kind of early on. And then if you've heard me say later on in your career, the more you get experience to back that, 
they become a little bit less important. But I'm telling you, early on, it was very visible and they were very important. One thing that I want you to keep in mind is your first job in IT or help desk, cybersecurity, whatever the case is, it's not gonna be your last job. So it might not be your favorite job. You might have things that you love. You might have things that you hate. You know, it's gonna be kind of all over the spectrum, but you need to keep an eye on when you're ready to go. Like I was talking about with the credentials, once you start getting so many certifications or you know multiple degrees or anything like that, you need to keep an eye on when you've outgrown that position and when it's time to move on. Either get promoted or change positions in that company, change companies, whatever the case is, you need to be ready and you need to keep your eye on that. Now, one of the things that I found when I was getting ready to leave that job, that first entry level job, was that I really didn't know what the market was for salaries. I knew what my company paid and people in my company at similar levels and you know the next couple levels up. So I had kind of an idea internally, but I didn't know externally what the going rate was. And that's one important thing because in every company, they're gonna have different salary bands and you have to pay attention to these, but they're not always gonna be the same in different companies. So tools like Glassdoor are extremely beneficial because you can go on there and you can actually look up what specific job titles have for salaries or companies, and you can get a much better idea about what the going rate is. Once you start getting more experience, you're gonna start learning more of this, kind of get a better feel for it, and not necessarily have to rely on some of these tools as much, because, you know, again, you'll just have a better idea. But you can also talk to people in your company that maybe are leaving or that have left and get a better idea of what they're getting. Because frankly, some companies will pay very little compared to other companies. And you just have to really make sure that you don't get, uh, you don't get taken advantage of when you go to some other companies and they give you an offer that's maybe slightly above what you're making, but it's really well below the market value. Now, question of the day, if you're working in cybersecurity right now, what are you doing? If you're not working in cybersecurity and trying to get into it, what are you doing to prepare? Let me know down in the comment section below. In this video, we talked about my first cybersecurity job, which was an entry level job paying around $60,000 a year. I hope that it's been helpful. And I want you to keep in mind that just because mine was paying around 60,000, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's what you're gonna get. It could be less, it could be more. But honestly, from what I've seen, 50 to $60,000 a year is probably pretty reasonable and probably on the lower end as far as entry level cybersecurity jobs. Salaries are just going crazy these days but it gives you kind of an idea of what I did, how I prepared, where my skill set was, and the things that I paid attention to in the job. So if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave a thumbs up to like this video, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.